everyone! In this week's video, we are going to talk about using XGBoost for multi-class classification. In last week's video, we went over using random forest for multi-class classification, and this is part two of that video. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure you check that out. So before we jump into the code, I just really quickly wanted to go over what the XGBoost model is. Now, XGBoost can be used for both regression and classification tasks, but today we're going to use it for classification. XGBoost is an ensemble model that uses gradient boosting. It combines multiple decision trees in order to make a classification. However, unlike random forest, which builds the trees in parallel, XGBoost builds each decision tree sequentially in such a way that each new tree that's built corrects the errors of the previous tree. This process is called boosting. All right, so now that we know what XGBoost is, let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and our code. All right, so here we are in our Jupyter Notebook environment. Here you can see all the libraries we need to import. Just like last time, we're importing pandas, numpy, and a lot of models from sklearn. And for xgboost, we're using the library xgboost. And like we did last time as well, we'll load in the Spotify tracks data set. Okay, so just to review the problem statement that we have, the Spotify tracks data set contains information about different songs in Spotify. So in the data set, you have an individual track, the artist it's written by, the album it's on, and then there's also these numeric columns that give different like metrics about the song, like how danceable it is, how loud it is, how much energy it has. And what we want to do is we want to see if we can use these numeric columns to predict or to classify each song as a specific track genre. And last time we also saw that this data set has a lot of different unique genres, but for the purposes of this exercise, we will limit the genres just to these six. We did that last time and we'll do this again for XGBoost as well. Now this cell is just some cleaning step, just dropping some columns. This is something I went over in the last video, so if you want the details on it, you can see it over there. And then here, I'm just dividing up this Spotify tracks data set into our train validation and test sets. Just as a reminder, our train set is the data set that our model will be trained on. Our validation set is the data set we'll use to see how well this trained model performs. And then finally, once we're done with our model, we're happy with how it's performing on the validation set, then we will test its performance on the test set to see how well the model performs on unseen data. And like I mentioned last time, this test set is only used once, so we only use it with our finalized model. And then here I have some encoding steps just to uh, change any categorical data into numeric data, and then I also scaled different numeric features that we have. And again, if you want more details on these steps, those were, we went over those in the random forest video, and they're the same for this video, so I won't cover them again. So now our next step is creating the random forest classifier. So to do that, we will define a variable called XGB classifier. This will contain our model. And to define the model, we take that XGB library and there is an XGB classifier that we can instantiate. And we will set random state equal to 42. This is just so we get the same results every single time we run this notebook. And we're not setting any other hyperparameters here because we just want to see a baseline performance of how well the XGB classifier performs on the data without hyperparameter tuning. So now we will fit this model onto the X train and Y train data sets. And we want to see how well this performs on our validation set. So we will use the predict function and pass it X val. So these are all the observations in our validation set. So once the model is fit on our X train data set, we will pass the model the X val data set and then our XGB classifier will classify each of the observations in this validation set into whichever genre it predicts it to be. And we can use accuracy to see how well this model performed. There's different metrics you can use for this, but for this video, we will be using accuracy. So for that, we'll pass it the YVAL scores. These are the actual genres that each song in the validation set is. And then YPRED is the genres that are XGB classifier classified those songs as. And like we did last time, we'll also print out a classification report and a confusion matrix to see if there's any genres that the model is predict 
performing particularly well or particularly bad on. So let's run that. And we see we get a test accuracy. This is actually validation, a validation accuracy of 0 0.7025. And then we see the classification report here. And we also see the confusion matrix. And here we can see that mostly the this diagonal has the highest value. So that means it is classifying the genres correctly most of the time. Now 0 0.70 isn't a bad accuracy score, but we do want to see if we can bump that up a little bit by using hyperparameter tuning. Now hyperparameters are parameters that the model doesn't learn from training, but parameters that we manually set. And there's a lot of hyperparameters and a lot of different combination of values that can be used for this hyper for these hyperparameters. And the way that we find the optimal combination of these hyperparameters is to use hyperparameter tuning. So we'll do that here by defining the hyperparameters we want to tune for XGBoost. And these are the ones we want to use for tuning. And this isn't an exhaustive list of all the hyperparameters that you can use for XGBoost, but it's just the ones we'll use today. And I'll kind of quickly go over what each of them do. So n estimators is the number of trees in the model. Now, the learning rate is the rate at, at which the model makes changes to the weights. Max depth is how deep the trees can be or like how many levels they can have. Min child weight is the minimum number of data points or observations that should be present in each node of the tree. And this is kind of similar to min sample split from random forest, if you remember that parameter. Subsample controls the number of observations that is used to build each tree. Smaller subsamples create a less complex model and a larger subsample creates a more complex model. And you have to be careful of that a little bit because it can lead to overfitting. Then coal sample by tree determines how many features are used to build each tree. And similar to subsample, a smaller value here leads to less complex trees and a higher value leads to more complex trees and potential over and potential risk of overfitting. Now, these final two parameters, reg alpha and reg lambda are going to control the strength of regularization in our model. This first one here, reg alpha, this sets the strength of the L1 regularization term on the weights. And L1 regular regularization adds the absolute value of each coefficient as a penalty term to the loss function. By doing this, it drives the the coefficient of less important features to zero. So a lot of times this is kind of used for feature selection. Reg lambda, on the other hand, is used to set the strength of L2 regularization term on the weights. L2 adds the sum of the squares of the coefficients as a penalty term to the loss function. And this is needed when all features in a model are important and we want to give them kind of equal importance or when they're correlated so that we're able to influence so that they're all able to influence the model equally. And I will note for these for both of these that larger values for either of these leads to less overfitting. This is because both these hyperparameters control the strength or of regularization and a higher value means more regularization, which means a model is penalized more for having higher coefficients. On the other hand, we do have to be careful not to set these values too low or the model will underfit the data. Okay, so now we will redefine our model. And again, we're setting that random state so we get the same results each time. And what we're going to do is here is we're going to use cross validation to determine which combination of these hyperparameters is the best. And we'll use a tenfold cross validation. So the model will be trained on nine of the folds and it will be validated on the remaining 10th fold. We'll loop through these validation folds so that each of the 10 folds can be used as the validation fold once. And there's a few different ways you can loop through the different combinations of these hyperparameters. There's grid search CV and then there's randomized search CV. What grid search CV does is it takes every single combination of these parameters and loops through all of them. Now that can take a really long time. So if you're in a situation kind of like we are right now where there's a lot of different hyperparameters and there's quite a few different values for each of them to the point where the number of combinations is going to be quite big. Instead of using grid search CV, you can use randomized search CV where you can define how many different combinations you want to loop through and randomized search CV will randomly select that number of combinations to test out and it'll return the one that gives the best accuracy. So that's actually what we'll do here. And so there's a method called randomized search CV and it takes as parameters the model, the parameter grid, 
the number of uh, cross validations you want to do or cross validation folds you want, which in our case is 10. It'll take the scoring metric you want to use. For us, it's accuracy. And then it takes this n iter parameter. And what and this is the parameter that describes how many different combinations you want to search through. So we want 100 different combinations. And then we'll set n jobs equal to 1 and verbose equal to 2. This should actually be, ne we'll set this to negative 1 because an n jobs just tells randomized search CV to do parallel processing. And the next step is to just fit x train and y train. And then we want to return the per, the XGBoost model with the best parameters or the one that gives the highest accuracy score. And we can do that by accessing the best estimator attribute. And we'll also want to print out what the best parameters were for that model. And we want to print out what the best accuracy score it receives is. So now we'll run that and you'll see it's fitting 10 folds for each of 100 candidates, so 100 different random combinations, which means it's going to fit the model 1,000 times, which still is quite a few times. However, this will take around 10 minutes to run, whereas if we used grid search CV and we used every single combination that there is of these, we're running around 20,000 different combinations, which if we do that 10 times for each of them, that's 200,000 fits, which will take a really long time and we don't want to wait that long. So instead, we're going to do randomized search CV and randomly select 100 different combinations for a total of 1,000 fits. Okay, so that's done running. Took about five and a half minutes. And I did forget to mention, but you should set random state here as well so that it runs similarly each time if you want to reproduce the results. And we see the model with the most optimized parameters can yield an accuracy of 0.726, so around 0.73, which is a little bit better than 0.70. And these are the parameters that the model has that yielded that accuracy score. Now, at this point, there's a few things you could do. The first is you can say that this is a good enough accuracy score and I'm done messing with the model. This is the best model I'm going to get, so I'm going to test it on my test set that I defined earlier, which is actually what we're going to do. Or if you want a higher accuracy, you could go back and either try out different hyperparameters or change the values that you're using um, to get some different combinations of hyperparameters to see if you can get that accuracy even higher. But like I mentioned, for the sake of this video, we'll say that that's a good enough accuracy and we'll go ahead and test this model on our test set. So we'll define Ypred again, and we'll take our best XGBoost model, and we'll use that to predict the genres of our Y, of our X test data set. And we also wanna see what the test accuracy is. So we use accuracy score. We'll pass it our Y test data set. So those are the actual genres of the songs that are in X test. And then we'll give it our Y prod, which is the predictions that this hyperparameter tuned model is giving us. And I'll copy some code I wrote before that'll just print this accuracy and it'll also print the classification report and the confusion matrix like before. So when we run that, we see we get a model performance of 0 0.7075, which is a little bit worse than how our model performed during uh, hyperparameter tuning, but that is to be expected. But it's pretty similar, so our test accuracy is 0 0.70. And as a last step, like we did with the random forest video, we can also get the feature importances. I'm just gonna copy code I had earlier for that. And we can access the feature importances by taking the feature importances attribute of our best XGB model. And when we print that, we see that popularity and whether a song is explicit or not and its mode are kind of the most important. And liveliness and key is less important for XGBoost to classify a song as one of the six genres. And finally, I did want to quickly go over when you would use XGBoost versus Random Forest. Generally, when you're doing a machine learning problem or a data science problem, you'd probably test out both and see which one gives you a better performance. But there are some guidelines on when you would use each one. So Random Forest is good to use when you don't need or you don't have a lot of com computational power. This is a more simple model that takes less computational power. It's also good to use when you need a more interpretable model 
or when you have a data set that's not too complex. XGBoost, on the other hand, is good to use when you do have a lot of computational power because that requires some more computational power than Random Forest. If you want a higher performance model, XGBoost is a good one to use. If you have a class imbalance where let's say in our Spotify data set, if we had a lot of pop songs and not very many country songs or EDM songs, then XGBoost would be better to use in that case as well. And finally, if you have a larger and more complex data set, then XGBoost is also better to use in that case as well. Okay, so that is it for this XGBoost video for multi-class classification. We went over what the XGBoost classifier model is, and we went over an example of how to use it to classify Spotify tracks as different genres. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you considered subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.